Easton, and welcome to the Rabbi's Roundtable. I'm Rabbi Peter Hyman, Rabbi at Temple B'nai Israel, and we are coming to you from the studios of MCTV in the basement of the Avalon Theater, and I'm glad to be here. I hope everybody's well and enjoying the summer uh, as unique as this may be. Uh, interesting show this morning for everybody. Uh, my first guest actually needs no introduction. He's a member of the uh, past president of the Talbot County Council, uh, Corey Pack. Uh, everybody knows Corey uh, for a multiplicity of reasons. All sure. good, may I add. And thank you for being at the Rabbi's Roundtable. Always my pleasure to and, be here with you. Uh, thanks. And I know you have some information about vaccines and mm -hmm. vaccination, not, not only locations, but availability yes. in, in, in the, in the, uh, in the county and in, the, in our area. So uh, share with us what you need to tell us, Absolutely. and I appreciate it. Thank well, you. Well, thank you for the invite. It's always a pleasure to, uh, to be here and speak with you and your audience. Um, as part of our effort here in Talbot County to make sure that we do all we can to get citizens vaccinated and to make sure that we dispel any misinformation or false information, yes. uh, the county has assembled a vaccine equity task force, which is headed by Nancy Andrews and Dr. Uh, Maria McGuire mm -hmm. uh, with our health department. Uh, we meet weekly. I am the liaison to that group, that group from the county council, and we meet weekly uh, with a number of other uh, concerned stakeholders in, in the county uh, to make sure that we are doing all that we can to address uh, the importance of vaccines and, and also the importance of continued testing uh, here in the county. Um, uh, I bring you some bad news. We report that our positivity rates are going back up. We're back over 5%, uh, which we have not been since sometime in mid-March. Uh, that's not the direction that we want to head into. We want to keep below 5% uh, with our positivity uh, showing. Uh, so we, we, do, we still know there's some work yet to do. Yeah. Uh, this task group uh, has been assembled to get vaccinate, vaccines out there to the public in a variety of ways. Uh, there have been many clinics that have been offered, some very large, some very small. Um, but every one counts, so every one sure. shot counts. So we can't stress the importance of people uh, going out and getting their vaccinations. Um, we're also trying to address um, whatever skepticism people may have as far as why they're not getting vaccinated. And again, there's a lot of misinformation and bad information on the internet or being uh, transmitted by friends. And we want to make sure that people are getting the most up-to-date information that we possibly can give them. What are you hearing in terms of the negative or the misinformation? Yeah. And, and where is it? Is it just from the internet or are people speaking what they think is accurate and correct and it turns out not to be because not for any... Uh, malicious reasons, but they're just misinformed. Well, you know, there there is a, a healthy dose of fear out there, okay. and there there are persons who are just saying, "Well, I'm afraid to get vaccinated because I don't know what's going to happen." Even though the data tells them that the vaccines are very effective, over 90 percent effective in fighting COVID-19, uh, there have been some very small percentage of persons who've had uh, uh, a uh, a bad reaction to the vaccine, mm -hmm. but that's a very small number compared to the number of people nationwide who have been vaccinated. So, um, you know, one thing that we're trying to do is address why aren't you being vaccinated? Yeah. What are you waiting for? And we hear that a lot with our younger population, that 18 and 30 age group, mm -hmm. they're saying, well, I want to wait, I'm waiting to see. Um, the, the unfortunate side of that scenario is that we've seen persons who've taken that same stance, who've ended up in the ICU, who ended up on ventilators, and when they uh, thank God, come out of that, the first thing out of their mouth is, I wish I wouldn't have waited. Yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah. So um, if you want to see uh, what that looks like, you can go onto the internet and see persons who have taken that same position. So we want to try to get people to understand that this is a very safe vaccine. Uh, we as, as a population have been vaccinated for a long time, yeah. going back to smallpox and other types of, of sure. deadly viruses. So, yeah. yeah, I know I got, I got vaccinated as part of the uh, hospital clergy staff mm -hmm. I think in January and I know it made me feel a whole lot better in terms of a, any kind of physical reaction I think I had a little pain in the, yeah. the injection site and I was tired for an afternoon right. and I went to sleep early and got up the next day and there, were, there was no particular after effect that I, I same thing with experienced. me and, and we and we try to address all of that up front 
Um, there is uh, information you can go into the County Health Department website. Uh, you can go onto our emergency services website and click on the COVID tab, uh, tab and get all of the latest information that we have from the CDC, from the state of Maryland. Uh, so we're not trying to hide or distort anything. Right. If we know that you're going to have some soreness in your arms and fatigue afterwards, we need to let you know that so you can prepare for that. I mean, that's in terms of my response, it was just, it was, that's all it was. It was, you know, a momentary inconvenience and it was over in a day. Sure. And, and for a long, you know, the long lasting effect of, of that vaccine in your body, protecting you. Um, protecting your loved ones, protecting the other individuals you may come in contact with your activities. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's a matter of safety and health. Yeah. And, and, you know, I hope people will take what you're sharing with us seriously mm -hmm. and uh, that we can even make a better response than we have. Yeah. And we do have some, some uh, additional clinics uh, coming up. Uh, we, we've had a number of clinics over the summer. Uh, we had a clinic down in St. Michael's back in June. Uh, with uh, Chief Smith and the Community Center down in St. Michael's along with Union United Methodist Church. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to thank them for all their efforts. Um, Charlene Brooks over sure. at the Senior Center, sure. uh, she did a clinic there. Um, and that age group, that, that's, that, that senior population, that 65 and older, we don't really have to worry too much about them. They are, they are out there, right. they're probably over 80% vaccinated wow. in, the, in the county. It is that younger age group that we're still trying to struggle with. Uh, we have the upcoming vaccination uh, playing uh, over at the BAM Center on Joe White oh, Street. Uh, that's uh, on the August the 28th, so that's in a couple of weeks. Uh, then Eastern Airport Day in September, September 25th, uh, we're going to be set up out there for another event uh, for vaccination. So uh, we're, we're trying to work with different organizations, different groups, and say, hey, can we come in and yeah. put up a table and oh, um, we'll put up a tent or whatever and, and vaccinate. Uh, we also want to tip our hats to a lot of our uh, business partners, you know, CVS, Walgreens, sure. Target. Uh, they're doing a lot of vaccinations through their pharmacies, and so we don't want to leave them out in their efforts. One of the things, Rabbi, we're trying to do now as, as, as we're preparing to send our students back to school is to continue working with those business partners so that uh, maybe do displays at the uh, kiosks where they have their notebooks and crayons and oh, things like cool. that, reminding parents yeah. to get vaccinated. Excellent. And for those parents who may have those middle to upper school students that's 12 to 18, you know, take them to get vaccinated. Because I think the school is going to, if not required, if not mandated, uh, certainly push to have the, that age group well, vaccinated. You know, again, this is this is this is a serious health situation. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I know I've been talking to. Uh, clergy colleagues, even with regard to religious school and what, mm -hmm. what, what the Sunday school is going to look like or whatever, and, right. uh, um, especially for the littler ones. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's we, we had a, 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 uh, an outbreak, uh, well, I'm, I'm not, let, me, let me rephrase that, we had a uh, shutdown out uh, camp at the community center uh, that the county runs, our summer camp. We had one student who showed positive, and uh, the camp was shut down for two weeks. Okay. Camp World will reopen on August the 8th. Good. Uh, so the parents will have the last two weeks of camp okay. to send their kids back sure. to. And we, we were sorry for the inconvenience uh, for those parents, but it's better to be safe oh, uh, and, and make sure we take the appropriate action. So There's no question. It's better to be safe mm -hmm. than say, gee, we should have done something differently yeah. and mm -hmm. end up being sorry. And, and as, as this Delta virus uh, it's showing to be more the, the the more pronounced virus right now or variants out there right now. Uh, we're telling people if you feel uncomfortable, you know, you were you were talking about your mask area. I have mine with me. I carry it with me all, yeah, me all, always. Uh, we tell people if you feel uncomfortable in a indoor setting, wear your mask. Uh, don't let let's not mask shame out there. Mm -hmm. You know. Uh, so uh, I had a, 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 a relative call me the other day. He's planning a, a family get together in September, which is outdoors. And he said, hey, Corey, you know, should we, uh, should we require a mask? And I said, well, that's up to you, and that's up to the individuals if they want to wear a mask. It's an mm -hmm. outdoor setting. It's a very large park. But uh, certainly indoor, large gatherings, what we're saying to people is that Absolutely. if you feel that you need to wear your mask, wear your mask, and let's not mask shame each other. That's that. exactly correct. Right. Exactly correct. Corey, thank you for sharing this. I think it's important information. It's necessary to get out. Sure. And uh, you'll come back. I'll we'll, come we'll, back we'll, whenever. We'll, yeah. Oh, yeah, always. Uh, <laughs> Hopefully the numbers are going down. Yeah, back. well, uh, um, you'll give us uh, an update uh, yes. every couple of months or every sure. month or something. And I appreciate that. And, and your, your listeners can always go into the county website, the yep. county website, the health department. 
uh, and click on that and get all the latest numbers from the health department as well as from the emergency services uh, uh, website as well. Thank you. We've been so, talking to Corey Pack, uh, town, uh, county council member and uh, uh, driver of this important, yeah. important topic One regarding these, yeah. uh, vaccines and the necessity and the wisdom in getting vaccinated for everybody's well-being. Corey, thanks for being Thank on you. the Rabbi's Roundtable. Absolutely. Thank you. We will be back momentarily. The Avalon Foundation and MCTV programming is proudly supported by Chesapeake College. Chesapeake College, your time, your place. We are MCTV, Midshore Community Television. We want your help in making our station more robust so that we can better serve the residents of Talbot County. So, how can you help? If you are already making video content, submit that content for broadcast to the station. It's free! Are you involved in events, shows, or lectures that would be of interest to the community? We can work with you to figure out the best way to capture those events for airing on MCTV. Be it training, equipment rental, or hiring our production staff to film at a reasonable rate. Do you want to produce your own show? Let us help you get started. Come be a part of this valuable community resource. Email the station at nick at avalonfoundation.org or visit us in the basement of the historic Avalon Theater at 40 East Dover Street in downtown Easton. And Easton, we are back and welcome to the Rabbi's Roundtable. I'm Rabbi Peter Hyman. We are coming to you from the studios of MCTV and we have second guests on the show this morning. Uh, those of you who have heard me speak about the Eastern Economic Development Corporation, you know how enthusiastic I am about it. I'm, I'm really fortunate to be a, a, a member of that board. I find it inspirational, visionary, and I'm always reminded, um, you'll let me be a clergy person for a moment, there is a, proverb, there's a statement in the book of Proverbs that says, where there is no vision, the people perish. And uh, truth of the matter is, the EEDC is visionary, insightful, run by very smart and uh, gifted folk, and I'm delighted to have representatives at the table um, from the EEDC. Sitting next to me, to my right, is Holly Dekarski. Holly is the, um, well, tell us who, tell us what you do. I actually have it here, but you go ahead. Yeah. I am the new director of downtown development. Yes, the director of downtown development. And sitting next to uh, Holly is Lance Morris. And Lance is the... Communications assistant. Communications assistant. Um, both very talented, effective folk. And I'm glad you've come to the Rabbi's Roundtable. Um, tell us a little bit about yourself. Then, Lance, you'll do the same. And then we'll talk about what's going on at the, the EDC in terms of what you guys are doing. Because it's really important and... Uh, significant work and the community needs to know what's happening so okay um, so I am new to Easton I've been here for about a month and it had always been our plan and our intention to move to the Eastern Shore one day and we sort of reevaluated life when COVID hit I think a lot of us did yeah. and um, I uh, moved here from Lidditz in Pennsylvania and I was a Main Street manager there um, and that's the same basic job I'm going to do here as well so um, this was very attractive to me I love Easton in this area and it just has so much potential and so I was pretty excited I, I call Easton the most deceptive city I've ever lived in yeah and I, I, I don't say that pejoratively because you know you think you're going to the outskirts of God knows where and it's sophisticated it is it, it's it's very cool it's it is. very cool. So uh, we're glad you're here. I'm glad you're here. Lance, tell us about your background and uh, how you end up at the Eastern Economic Development Corporation. Sure, I'll try to condense that story as much as I can. It's okay. Um, so I went to college in the Eastern Shore. I started out at UMES, went there for two years, and transferred to Salisbury, finished my time there, and graduated from there. I'm used to driving past Easton staying here <laughs> yeah yep. um, but you're very right it is a very deceptive place to be because you expect that it's just you know behind 50 it's like nothing but fields and stuff yep, exactly but of course this is like a thriving area of art and a lot of great people I think this is the most I've had to be ingrained in a community because the bigger places easier just for you to hide and just sure kind of be in a pocket by yourself um, but Easton has taught me to open up more and become more ingrained with people and 
Yeah, I'm happy to be here and help communicate and tell people stories. Yep. No, I think it's it's important. And so let's let's talk a little bit about what the EDC is doing and 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 uh, the downtown and your your vision and your your mission and how it's becoming uh, uh, realized. So we, um, the EEDC manages both our state designated Main Street program and our state designated Arts and Entertainment District, which is pretty exciting. Obviously, I've, I come from a Main Street background. I have not had the pleasure of an Arts and Entertainment District, so that's exciting. And that is one of the things I think makes Easton super unique is oh. the fact that we have so much art and culture here. and, and and not all of it is downtown, but a vast majority of it is, and it's really exciting. And it's, I think that it's a, it's an amazing community to be able to have that access and have that sort of thing. Um, so you know, one of the things that we need to do is to help, um, obviously, to promote those types of things to the community yep. Yep. and to um, tourists. We want to bring in tourism, and that helps with um, the economic uh, vitality of our downtown. Sure. Um, so from that, from that perspective for the arts and entertainment we're trying to really promote what we have and the artists we have and the diversity that we have here and then for the main street you know we're we're required to maintain the economic vitality of our community and our downtown and those businesses down there and we have a specific district that we're responsible for and so um sometimes i think people think we're like a chamber and we're not a chamber does economic development in their own fashion and usually for a broader area and they have membership and and we don't have that. We take care of whatever is listed in our district that the state has de designated for us, and we do report all that stuff back to the state for both of those districts. Um, and again, help to promote. We want to get feet in the streets, and some of that comes through doing events, events that we will put on ourselves, mm -hmm. and then other ones that uh, other community members, such as the Avalon, will maybe yeah. put on, will help to promote. Yeah. And, and Lance, as communications assistant, you, you are in contact. How, how are you doing that? Is it strictly uh, uh, internet lot, or, you know? A lot of it is digital because I believe that's just the easiest thing for people to kind of get a grasp of in terms of communication since it changes daily yeah. and hourly. Um, yeah. But a lot of it is creating um, different things that will catch the eye of people and making sure that not only are artists um, given enough of a, I don't know, a platform, but we make sure that people have something that they'll be interested in, they'll catch the eye. A lot of my work is doing like graphics and stuff like that too, which has been a funny uh, experience. So I didn't think I had any skill in that type of thing. Yeah, well, yeah. on the job training. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. You know, um, and, and we do have an interesting downtown. Yes. Um, I was telling, I had met with folk who had never been to Easton before. I had met with them yesterday, and they, they said, you know, tell us about Easton. And I said, basically, it's a very sophisticated, interesting, and engaging town, and most people don't understand it. And uh, somebody said, well, we used to drive to Salisbury, you know, to the beach, and we would drive by it, and we never really stopped. And he said, I learned we stopped now. and." Uh, we have to, we have two ice cream places <laughs> that works for me <laughs> there's lots of main streets on that entire ride that yeah. commute to the beach yeah. that are all main street programs yeah. and they are great little towns in their own right that yeah. people should really pause and you know yeah. veer off for an hour or an afternoon and visit what what do you think is the most challenging element in all of this uh, component from your perspectives um, for me right now, it's just communication. One of the, the primary jobs of Main Street Manager is to, to be a voice for our downtown businesses to the town and to the community, but then also for the town back to um, the merchants. So opening up those lines of communication just so that we can all work together and always yeah. be looking for the best compromise because you're going to have to compromise at some sure. point, but working for the best um, outcome. And, and to do things that are going to benefit, benefit businesses, benefit the community, and benefit town. Have our merchants been receptive and responsive? Yeah, we're working on it. Okay, you know, I, 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 didn't, I didn't say that tongue in cheek. I mean, no. I, I, you know, I know, it, you know. It is challenging in any town. Yeah. I, I yeah, can and, tell and you from experience. Sure, and, so. and um, again, it's, it's, it's growth mm -hmm. and it's development, and again, going back to the where there is no vision, that's, you have to have vision. 
and, and that's really important. So what you guys are doing, I think, is critical, actually. And, and, and I hope people recognize that. And it's always challenging to build when you have folk who say, well, we've always done it that way. Yep. You know, those are the six most horrible words in the English language. Right. We've always done it that way, you know. Yeah, you know, I agree. That's, I agree. Well, that's a different sermon. Um, <laughs> anything else you want the, the community to be aware of? Anything, Lance, you want to communicate with them? Sure. Um, we still have our Sounds of Summer series that goes on almost every Friday, but always every Saturday. Um, we are trying to move that around a bit to make sure that we can hit more pockets of downtown Easton. You want to explain that a little more? Just, uh, sure. Um, I th we've started doing some Fridays at in front of the Talbot County Courthouse. Okay. Um, we have one this Friday with Wayne Wheeler. It's a music program. Yes, sir. Yes. So we have different types of live music. I believe this, this particular genre on Friday is rock and country. and It's a good mixture of those two things. Cool. Saturday we have Dan Van Skyver with us again. He's usually great yeah. with everything. He has originals and different types of old rock that I like. Um, but yeah, it's making sure that we have a good jukebox for everybody, and that way we don't keep too static or boring. And yeah, <laughs> no, I, I think I think what what the EEDC is doing is crucial. Mm. I don't know if people recognize that, but it is. Um, it's it's important to the image of our town and the perception of who we are both as a community as well as a, a, a place of interest right. and that's that's really what we have to be doing so I appreciate very much both of you for sure and uh, uh, Natalie and Tracy um, I always call Natalie, uh, Tracy after uh, meetings and go, thank you so much. I, I am so inspired. I, I, and that's really true. I mean, I've been doing this for since the day that I got on the, uh, the EEDC board. It's just remarkable um, for a multiplicity of reasons. And as a member of the clergy community, you know, the, the, the stronger the city, the better it is for our religious institutions. Yes. You know, right. people want to be here. Right. And... Um, so, so it's not just a, a, a one focus reality. It, it has a broad uh, effect on a lot of levels. Always multifaceted. Always. Absolutely. Always multifaceted. So I, I'm deeply appreciative of what you guys do and what the EEDC does. And uh, we're fortunate that we have as, as strong and as visionary a team as, as we have it, it there. So thank you very much. Thank you for coming on the Rabbi's Roundtable. You will come back. You will do more reports because I, I really think it's important that the community understand what's happening, how it's happening, and, and how it's being uh, presented and motivated. So thank you for being on the Rabbi's Roundtable. Thanks for having us. And we will be back momentarily Easton. Did you know? MCTV programming is available online. Find our shows like Rabbi's Roundtable, Carlisle's Chesapeake, The Shameless Picture Show, Conversations with Sherry, and The Avalon Theater Presents at youtube.com slash Community Television. And we are back, and Easton, you are at the Rabbi's Roundtable. I'm Rabbi Peter Hyman, and we are in the studios of MCTV uh, for which I am deeply grateful. <laughs> we'll talk more about that another time. Uh, our third guest this morning <clears throat> is Fred Hughes. Fred, thanks for being here. Fred is the founder of Jazz Alive. And tell us a little about a little bit about Jazz Alive, and then I'll have some questions and we can talk. Great. Well, <clears throat> thanks again for having me. No, I'm, 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 I'm it. important. It's a, it's, a, it's a topic that's dear to my heart. Uh, I play vibes and marimba right, right. and not very well anymore. <laughs> and you have a beautiful piano in yep. the temple. Oh, we do. Oh, thank <laughs> yes, we do indeed. Yes, yes. yes. Well, I formed Jazz Alive um, in 2019 um, for numerous reasons. First of all, I've been a, a performer all my life. You know, I've traveled the world, played festivals, cool. um, played a lot here on the uh, Eastern Shore every year at the Rehoboth Jazz Festival, concerts at different places. And as I continued to... Uh, I conducted the Ken Island Community Band for a while, and um, as, a, as a result of that, I got to know a lot of people here on the shore. 
In particular, I would adjudicate with the Eastern Shore Band Directors Association every June, January or February, they get all of the high school and middle school bands and they perform for adjudication. And, and because of conducting the community band, I was asked to do that. So I'm, I'm sitting here watching these wonderful concert bands throughout the shore and wonderful musicians, and I'm asking the band directors about their jazz programs, and a lot of them didn't have any jazz programs. Yeah. So, um, thanks to several different um, programs that I did uh, in uh, Donna Ewing's uh, Easton Middle School, I got to know Donna, and Donna kept saying, you know, with all of your jazz background, have you ever thought of doing more for jazz, and especially our students? So one thing led to another. Our mission is the continuation and preservation of jazz, America's indigenous art yep. form. But I, as a person who's spent years from the stage looking out at my audience, know that if we don't get our young people involved in this, this art form that is so much a part of our history in this Ab country absolutely. is gone. Absolutely. So, you know, it's interesting. Um, be my parents chose the marimba because they didn't want me to play piano. They, they said everybody plays piano, so they wanted me to do something different. Um, it, and I'm glad they did. So I started playing marimba, and then uh, uh, in, in fourth grade or fifth grade, I got asked to be in the uh, school orchestra, and I started playing the hives. Um, but in high school, this, this whole issue about jazz, we had a very avant-garde, bright music director in high school who started a, a jazz program, and he got pushback. You know, there was real pushback from... Uh, well, it's not classical. Right? Right? They thought jazz was... I don't know what they thought. I, don't know, I do, but I won't go into it. But, uh, <laughs> uh, this, that's why I'm so uh, impressed with what you've done and why I think it's really important to promote and, and, and move it forward with, with it's such a, 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 a unique music reality to, to who we are as a, as a culture. Yes. Well, and I've been very fortunate in, in, in seeing it firsthand. Um, before I moved over here to the shore 10 years ago, I, I was the uh, lead teacher on uh, a program called Capital Jazz Project, which would go into middle schools in, in Washington, D.C. And one particular, in fact, the one school we went into, that band director retired and, and actually was one of my founding directors for Jazz Alive. Oh, cool. um, but he, his school, we would go in his school 20 times during the school year. And by the end of the school year, these middle school students were jamming. I mean, they understood the vocabulary and they were excited by playing this music. Yeah, the, the freedom and the ability to speak their own. Well, there's no yeah, right or wrong. It's, the, it's your, my memory is that early on, when I said, when I was that age, uh, people thought that jazz was just, they didn't realize that there was a, there, there, there was a, a, a structure to it that has its uh, own um, vocabulary. vocabulary vo yes, musical vocabulary yes. And, and, you know, oh, that's just people playing, you know, riffing. Right. They didn't use the word riffing, but, uh, and, and that's not the case. And that was, that was the big lesson that I, I was trying to uh, promote, so. Right, well it's interesting, you know, you give them the vocabulary, say okay, you see this particular chord symbol, just play these notes in the scale, and they hear it, they hear what's going on, and it's like, okay, yeah, yeah, do this. One, three, five. Yes, there you go. You know, the, there you the go. triad. Yeah. I, I won't get too rabbinic, but one of the reasons that I did so well in Hebrew grammar, this is a bizarre connection, because all Hebrew is based on three letter roots, one, three, five. And I, I get to Hebrew class and I'm looking at this and I'm saying, it's just like chords. You either do something in the middle, in the end, you know, at the beginning. Uh, oh, that's interesting. Oh, it's very, it's fascinating. Wow. And, and that's how I, that's how I learned Hebrew grammar, believe it or not. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Uh, and, and, and the connection between music theory and uh, grammar. Very interesting. Yes. Anyway, uh, um, Tell us more about what's coming up in terms of fall programming and that sort of thing. Well, we uh, we had our first concert this this past yep. Saturday yep. at the uh, Waterfowl Building uh, with the Hot Pub of Baltimore. We had a full house, so we're right. off and running. So we're starting the Delmarva Youth Jazz Orchestra in the fall. Oh, nice! And these concerts are a way to 
actually help get the word out, but also fund the orchestra. So we've got two more concerts coming up. On the 21st of August uh, at 7 p.m., we have The Great Guitars, the DC edition. And on um, September 18th, we have The Great Harmonica Jazz Virtuoso, uh, Hendrik Merkins, oh, coming wow. in. Uh, that concert and, again is at 7. And at the, all of the Waterfall. All of the Waterfall. Yeah. Okay. Yep. And so we're accepting uh, students that want to audition. And this is from across Delmarva. Uh, that's why at Del Marlboro Youth Orchestra, you know, from from doing clinics and traveling across the peninsula, there's some really great pockets of like, Cape Penelope High School has a wonderful jazz program. Some of the high schools down in Salisbury have a wonderful. And we, of course, we have wonderful programs here in Talbot County, but to have those students get a chance to play, especially from different states, yeah. is something that doesn't. It's like in the state of Maryland, we have the Maryland All-State Jazz Band. In Delaware, they have the Delaware All-State Jazz Band, but never do those two states get together. So our idea is to give students, like-minded students, an that's opportunity great. to play together and learn this wonderful uh, repertoire. That's, that's, uh, who, who are you playing these days, by the way? Who am I, uh, when I'm listening? Yeah, no, and, and in terms of what the, what the kids will be playing, uh, what composers or what? Oh, uh, so I, I always start with the with the basics. Yeah. So it's it's always something from Basie. Cool. Something from Ellington. Of course. Something from Kenton. Yeah. Something from Buddy Rich. Very cool. So we start with the basics yeah. and get yeah. them no, really No, no, that's foundational. Yeah. That's, that's wonderful. Um, how can the community get involved with Jazz Alive if they want to and help and promote and that sort of thing. Well, thanks for asking that. If you go to jazz-alive.org, there's a support uh, banner right across the top. For our concerts, there's a sponsorship page. So if an organization wanted to sponsor the concert, there's a package that goes along with it, 10 tickets, uh, uh -huh. admission, yeah, yeah. you know, your, your logo across our program, across our, our, our monitors on stage. Um, and then it, it scales down from there. We, we even have ads in our program. Uh -huh. if businesses want to buy an ad for the program. And listings, if a family would like to just help support. You know, there's a patron listing for like $35 and so on and so forth. So cool. that all really, really helps. We wanted to put a great production in that waterfall building, so we're having to bring everything in, staging, all of that. Oh, wow. So it's costing us some money. Yeah. And we try to keep the ticket costs at you know, a family of four could come for $100. And we've achieved that, but we need help right. to pay the production right. costs. Right. And, and, and then put money towards the youth orchestra, so. You know, from again, from my perspective, this is so important. It's, it, you know, all our music programs are important, and I'm really delighted to see that we have a jazz program along with the other substantial, well-heeled programs that we have in Easton. Uh, like you said, Easton is a wonderful place oh, to be. You know, um, uh, and, and this this just this just uh, underscores the fact that it's very cool. I, I'm delighted that you're doing this. I, I wish I, I wish I had the chops to play with you guys. I don't. <laughs> but, <laughs> we'll get you there. Yeah, maybe <laughs> one day. But uh, um, this is important work that you're doing, and I think it's uh, a culturally powerful move. And I'm, I'm glad you're doing it. And I hope the community will take advantage not only to help support it, but participate in. Uh, what what you're offering down the road it's it's fabulous Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> we've been talking with fred hughes <clears throat> excuse me fred is the uh, founder of jazz alive it's a an excellent program uh, engaging and creative and exciting and fred you will come back as uh, things unfold and we'll talk more about this i enjoy the opportunity thanks thank for being you, the rabbi. rabbi's thank round you. table thank you easton this concludes this session of the Rabbi's Roundtable. See you next time.